the Bible said through one man's sin entered into the world. Through the seed of Adam right. having relationships with Eve, every person that was born was already born in violation of the law. You see how man, how Israel failed miserably trying to keep God's laws where he ultimately had to keep the, uh, judging them, judging them, judging them. With Did you know it's a chicken that they put oh, no. and it's like the scapegoat, but instead it's a chicken? No, And they I tie a rope on it and they pray their sins on the chicken. Really? Yeah, and they swing it around their head till they kill it. pluck your eye out in your hand because you're going to hell. Because you can't go to he uh, heaven by self-righteousness. Right. And Jesus said, your righteousness has to exceed that of the Pharisee. The exceeding righteousness is the imputed righteousness of Christ. Right, which he obtained by fulfilling the law. That, that was his whole purpose. 100%. And when he was, he, that's why he was born under it. He knew that man couldn't do it. He knew that you and I could not live it. He knew they couldn't live it. And, and you see throughout the whole, uh, the, the scriptures in, uh, in the Old Testament, in the, in the Old uh, Covenant and throughout the whole Old Testament, you see how man, how Israel failed miserably trying to keep God's laws where he ultimately had to keep the, uh, judging them, judging them, judging them. And, the, right. and so as a result, Jesus seeing that man could never fulfill it, that was his whole plan. He had a plan tucked in his heart that when man fell that he was going to send Can, can I ask son. you a question? Okay, I'm going to ask you. It's not a trick question. Mm -hmm. It's not to put you on the spot. It's just a simple question. Was it the Passover lamb that forgave their sins for the next year? Okay. Or was it keeping the law? That made their sins go away. Oh, it was the Passover lamb. There you go. So here's the point. People fail to see that before God gave them the poison, and that when I use that lightly, the law that would condemn them, he made a provision of an antidote that if they killed the lamb at the Paschal lamb, they brought right. the, the household lamb, and they offered it for the upcoming year their sins were forgiven. And you know, the Paschal lamb, Pastor, in... in according to the Old Covenant and the laws that were established there for the sacrifices, there was a number of things that had to be met, requirements, standards that had to be met. And they would bring the lamb and the priest would have to examine that sacrificial lamb to make sure there were no blemishes. He couldn't have a crook nose, couldn't have a crook back, couldn't have one limb broken, couldn't have nothing. Everything had to be perfect on that lamb because it was going to be offered to God and they didn't want to go in with an offering the priest did and the high priest didn't want to go in with an offering they couldn't, they, they, couldn't. God, you know, they would be in trouble and they knew the ultimate end of that so they examined that lamb that lamb had to be perfect had to meet all the requirements you see that's why we keep referencing the scripture that he was born under the law why? because you see as he lived and walked under the law, he never violated it. It was like that lamb. It was examined by the priest, and everything in that lamb had to be perfect. Well, when he walked under the law and never sinned, crossed every T, dotted every I, never violated the law, what he was doing is that the law itself was examining his life and who he was and never could find fault in him. Right. And then he became the sinless, spotless, perfect Lamb of God. He was qualified by living under the now, law, now, Pastor which Bill, man couldn't do. Yeah, Pastor Bill, we got to qualify this because here's where people miss it. Because I heard years ago, and man, I, I knew it was blaspheming when they said it. They tried to talk about Jesus dying spiritually. Now, I'm not going to open up that can of worms for nothing, okay? Until maybe later in the program, we'll do a yeah, whole program a, on it. That's yeah, that's not in the line of where we're going here. Right. But here's my point. The comment was made, the only difference that Jesus made from every other prophet, he made the statement, every other prophet could have shed their blood to atone for their own sins, okay? 
But what Jesus did, he had to go to hell and suffer as a sinner. Wait, I, I, no, no, listen to me now. The reason why only Jesus could die for our sins was because of the virgin birth, right. because the DNA that came from the Holy Spirit, the male, uh, the Bible said through one man's sin entered into the world. Through the seed of Adam, right. having relationships with Eve, every person that was born was already born in violation of the law and couldn't keep it by nature, couldn't keep it if they tried. If they did keep it, it would still disqualify right. them because of the tainted blood. Right. Jesus' blood came from the Father through the Holy Spirit and the DNA made him no different than Adam without original sin. Therefore, he could qualify to keep the law and never taint his blood one bit. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it is. It's beautiful. And that's, that was the plan of God. That, and you know what? The, the enemy didn't see that. He didn't see that uh, if, the, if the God of this world, and they, they would have known that they were crucifying the Son of God, they'd have never killed him. No. Because, they, because once... He was smitten and, and crucified. That was to their demise. That was to the enemy's demise. Totally, Jesus was the final, complete sacrifice. You know, Pastor, this is something that we we went to to Israel about a, a little over a year ago, and it, it was a great trip. We had a wonderful time and everything. But I remember being on the on the flight there, and uh, at when the sun started coming up while we were in the, in mid flight. Um, all of the Jewish persons, that people that were on the, the mails, they stood up. They started wrapping all their little prayer boxes and putting their phylacteries on and, and putting their stuff on and their, their little prayer shawl and whatever, whatever the garments were. And they started standing up on a plane doing their thing, you know. And, you know, one thing I got to hand it to them, they're dedicated, they're committed, and they, they take what they do very serious. Um, Later, I had an opportunity to speak with one of them. And one of my main concerns was, okay, you have no Ark of the Covenant now. You see, if you're going to follow Judaism, or you're going to follow, follow the Jewish belief system, and that's infiltrating the body of Christ right now, big time, okay? Well, then, they have no Ark of the Covenant. Uh, if it's going to come back, God reveal. I don't know. I really don't know. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, I just think God purposefully let the temple be destroyed because that's the old way yeah. and the shadow. We don't need it anymore. Right. And it's showing them that they need something because they can't have How can they have it? Exactly. It's not there. The temple's not there. It's a new and living way that Jesus, when Jesus came, it was a new and living way. We didn't need the old anymore. Pastor, you know what I read? I got to tell you yes, this. Sure. You know how they get rid of their sins today? Well, that's exactly where I was going with this. Did you know it's a chicken that they put? Oh, no. And it's like the scapegoat, but instead it's a chicken. No, And they I never tie a rope on it and they pray their sins on the chicken. Really? Yeah, and they swing it around their head till they kill it. Wow. Read it. I never Go heard Google that. it. If you don't think, I, I Googled it the yeah. other day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually, that's not what he told you. Though. No, that's not what he told me. Um, there was no chicken in the conversation. It's a funky Because I don't remember that because I love chicken, okay? But here's the thing. Um, when I was talking with the gentleman, and we had a wonderful exchange, and it was brief, but it was good. I, I, my, in my heart and in my mind, I'm wondering, how do you have your sins forgiven if you don't have, number one, the brazen altar, the certified, bonafide sacrifices that God designated through the priesthood, you know, by revealing to the priesthood what the red heifer, all of these other things that had to be sacrificed to line up and to be in line with God's uh, ordinances and God's uh, sacrifices that he handed down to the Jews. Why, how do you have your sins forgiven? Number one, they have a religion and a belief system that don't even have the Ark of the Covenant anymore. That is very puzzling. They don't even have the most, the main piece of equipment or furniture, for lack of my education, a better word, the Ark of the Covenant, their central focal point, and have the tabernacle, which you see, if they had the Ark of the Covenant, they could easily build a, a brazen altar. 
they could easily have the, show, the, the table of showbread and the menorah and, 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 menorah and all of those things and, uh, and the altar of incense. They could have all of that in place according to the pattern that God showed Moses. But they don't. Well, they it's can't, been, Pastor Bill, because you know that God made it where uh, in 70 AD, you know that we were at Masada, uh, the Roman Empire under T Titus came and utterly destroyed the temple that Jesus predicted. Right. So the only time it's going to be rebuilt is uh, when the Lord's about to return, and it's the, going to be the Antichrist that occupies right. that temple, not Jesus. So that temple will never be resurrected for the purpose of going back to animal sacrifices. Right. It's a defiled temple. Exactly. But in, in reality, and that's perfect what you said, but the reality of this whole thing is they... People are embracing this form of religion. Yes. But yet, uh, at the same time, they don't even have all of the things necessary to even have a basis for this, to practice this religion. You're 100% right. And, and that, that's what was on my mind. And so I asked this gentleman, I said, how do you have your sins forgiven? You know, before, you had to go to the priest, you had to bring the offering. Matter of fact, they turned it into a money-making situation. Well, know? Jesus made a whip and drove them out because it misrepresented the whole plan of what God no was going to do through His Son, Jesus Christ. And let me just throw this in here. Religion misrepresents who Jesus is. Now, check it out. Google it. Don't take my word for it. And find out a lot of the Messianic congregations are now denying the deity of Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Some say Jeremiah, and others say one of the prophets. Jesus said, who do you, and that's the question, and I'm asking you at home. That's good. Who do you say that he is, okay?